Did you know that over the next five years, there'll be over a hundred new electric vehicles introduced into the marketplace? And that car behind me, the Honda Clarity, is one of them. And in fact, it comes in three different flavors. There's a fuel cell version, which runs on hydrogen. There's a pure electric version. And then there's that one, the plug-in hybrid. And coming up right now, we're going to review that one because it's the only one that's going to be sold in all 50 states. And of course, since this is TFL, we're going to do a zero to 60 test on all three cars because we can. And that is coming up right now. Full disclosure, Honda flew me here to beautiful Calistoga, California, just north of San Francisco, where they provided me with not only one, but three Clarities to drive. I wonder if this thing will start up. Let's try it. Uh, I guess not. Under the hood, we've got one 1 1.5 liter gasoline powered engine, two electric motors, of course, a battery pack that slid in underneath the car for a combined output of 212 horsepower and perhaps the most important number 47 miles of pure ev range so how long does it take to recharge the plug-in clarity well if you're on a public charger like this one you're going to recharge about 80 percent of the battery in 20 minutes if you're at home and you've got a 240 outlet, that's going to take about two and a half hours. It does have a push button selector. So if you want to go into drive, you just hit D. And since it's a plug-in hybrid, it's very quiet. Listen. I'm in sport mode, so we can go fast. And I found a bit of twisty road to give this chassis a bit of a workout. And I can tell you immediately that this is no Type R. If you're expecting a Civic Type R and you're gonna be carving corners, you're gonna be mightily disappointed. But if you're looking for a comfortable, quiet, very luxurious car that will get you in relative peace and serenity from your job to home, then you're looking at the right car. Obviously, this is a big and somewhat heavy car, so it's not really set up for carving corners, but you probably knew that. What it is, is supremely comfortable. The seats are very comfortable. The steering wheel is nice and thick. I like the control layout. I'm even becoming friends with this push button transmission, believe it or not. I still do miss the knob for the radio, but really that's my only complaint in this interior. It's a very nice place to spend a lot of time. This Clarity competes with the Toyota Prius Prime plug-in, the Ford Fusion plug-in, and of course, most closely, the Chevy Volt. Not Bolt, but Volt plug-in. Now, Honda was kind enough to provide a Volt for us to compare, so let's see how fast that is, zero to 60. All right, here we go. Come on. 40, 50, boom, 60. There you go, 8.86 .8 seconds. 8.86 seconds, zero to 60. There are about a dozen EVs that are sold here in California. But when you think about it, there's only really one maker that builds a truly lustworthy EV, a car where you want to go and sell your house for, and that would be, of course, Tesla. All the other cars are more utilitarian than sexy. Now, the Clarity is an interesting car because if you look at the individual parts, like this headlight or maybe this LED light, it's actually quite modern and sexy. But when you put it all together, it's just a little too polarizing in my mind. The other thing that you'll notice is I have paddle shifters right here. And of course, since there is no transmission, these do not shift gears. But what they do do is they allow for more or less regenerative braking. So right now, I'm actually using the left paddle shifter to brake going down this hill. And if I want to get a little bit more coasting, then I use the other one. I decrease the regenerative braking and the car goes down the hill faster and further. So it's pretty cool. You can actually drive it without necessarily using the brakes. I'm in the uh, Honda Clarity EV. And the great thing about EVs is that they have a lot of torque. And torque is what makes your wheel spin hard, like a burnout. And it's also what gets you to 60 fast. So let's just find out how fast this is from zero to 60. I've got a stopwatch. And let's do a quick zero to 60 run and just see. Here we go. And we're at 40, 
50, 60. 8.9 seconds. 8.9 seconds. So it's not hugely fast, but you know, for an EV that is going to be used as a commuter car to move you and your family, because this will hold five people in comfort. It's really big in here. It's not bad. While the car's outside styling may be a little polarizing, the interior certainly punches above its weight class. There's ultra suede here, which is luxurious. Everything you see in the car feels rich, expensive, and thoughtfully designed, kind of like you would expect from a Honda. In fact, the interior is more Acura than Honda. Check out this air duct. It's actually functional. It comes out right here and it creates a curtain of air over the rear wheel, which makes the car much more aerodynamic. However, it also, in my mind, makes the car much less stylish. What sets this clarity apart from, say, the Volt, which it directly competes against, is the fact that it's a much bigger car. In fact, it's a full five-passenger car. Look, I've got plenty of knee room. I'm sitting behind myself. I've got adequate headroom. This seat actually pulls down so you could almost sleep in it. And the trunk, well, let me show you that. It's immense. Yes, I told you this trunk was immense. I'm 6'2 and well over 200 pounds, and even I can fit back here. If you had golf clubs and you had a foursome, I'm betting you could fit all four sets of golf clubs back here. The powertrain is based on a Honda Accord hybrid, and so it's very similar to the way that that drives and feels. Is it a car that is the future? Honda thinks that we haven't decided yet what the future will be. It could be EVs, it could be plug-in hybrids, or it could be fuel cell hydrogen powered cars. And so they've kind of bet on all three, hoping that when one of these becomes the obvious way that cars will be powered in the future, they're in the game. Here we go, zero to 60 in the Clarity. That's powered by hydrogen and does nothing but put out H2O out the tailpipe. Here we go. You can hear the fan. 8.79, remarkable. If I recall, that is almost the same time as the Chevy Volt. One of the coolest features of this Clarity is this glass panel built into the trunk, kind of like the old CRX. But in order for this to be functional so you can see out the back, there's another component that I have to show you. And let me show you that by taking the back seat down. Not only is there a ski path through, can you see me waving, but there's a glass panel right here so you can see through this panel and through the panel in the trunk so that when you're backing up, you can see what's behind you or when you're driving, you can see right out the back. This is pretty cool. This Clarity comes with three drive modes. There's Econ, which basically gives you the best fuel economy using both the electric motor and the gasoline engine, 42 MPG according to the government. There's HV, which actually recharges the battery and kind of saves it for when you need it the most, like if you're in stop and go traffic or if you want the battery later in your trip. And of course, Sport, which gives you the most performance. So let's put it in Sport and go do a zero to 60 and see how fast it is. Here we go. Oh, 8.50, 8.50. So it's uh, very similar to the other two Clarities. The base version of the Clarity plug-in hybrid starts at 33,400. And if you want this touring model, which has a niftier inside, it's 36,600. This car is available in all 50 states. If you want the EV version, you have to live in California or Oregon, and of course, if you want the fuel cell only California, as always, this is Roman reporting for the Fast Lane Car. Check out tflcar.com for more news views. And of course, plug in fuel cell and EV clarity reviews. See you guys next time. Ciao.